بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد. This is the second Friday of this year's Ramadan after Salat al-Asr, between al-Asr and Maghrib. Many of the ulama of Islam were of the opinion that the hour in which the dua of the slave is answered is between this time. So I encourage you brothers, inshallah, and advise you all to make a lot of dua. Friday is the day that the Muslim also engages himself in the recitation of the Qur'an, especially Surah Al-Kahf. Some of us began in Ramadan and we said to ourselves, I'm going to do more in the month of Ramadan. And one of the things I would do more of is I'll read Surah Al-Kahf in each Ramadan. So la each Friday, last Friday is past. Now we still have the time, inshallah, to read Surah Al-Kahf and the virtues of that. But what we want to talk about, inshallah, today is an ibadah that many people have forgotten from our ummah, and this ibadah is very closely related and connected to Ramadan. No one is in any doubt that the Qur'an and fasting is together. Because of what's been mentioned in the Qur'an, and what's been mentioned in the authentic sunnah, the Qur'an and fasting are two ibadahs that are together to be done in the month of Ramadan. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمُ The month of Ramadan is the month that the Qur'an was revealed in as a huda and as something that makes clear to people the issues that they need to know. So whoever is present at home during that time, let them fast. So because the Qur'an was revealed in the month of Ramadan, it was chosen as the month of fasting because Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. Not only the Qur'an, but it's the month of all of the books that Allah Ta'ala has revealed. And an authentic hadith that's been collected by Imam Al-Tabarani on the authority of Wa'ira, the companion of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَرَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنزلت سهف إبراهيم أول ليلة من شهر رمضان وأنزلت التوراة لست مضت من رمضان وأنزل الإنجيل لثلاث عشر مضت من رمضان وأنزل الزبور لثمان عشرة خلت من رمضان وَأُنزِلِ الْقُرْآنِ لِأَرْبَعٍ وَإِشْرِينَ خَلَتْ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ This is important especially for you young people, our religion. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, or the Nabi mentioned in that hadith, as Sahih, that the suhuf that was given to Ibrahim, the book that Ibrahim had, those pages, they were revealed to him after six days passed in the month of Ramadan. The Torah was given to Musa after, or Ibrahim was given his book on the first night of Ramadan. And Musa was given the Torah after six days passed in Ramadan. Isa was given the Injil after 13 days passed from Ramadan. The Zubur that was given to Dawood was revealed to him after 18 days passed from Ramadan. And the Quran was revealed after 24 days passed in Ramadan. This is one of the strong proofs that the ulama of Islam used to show that the 25th is Laylatul Qadr. Because the Nabi says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this hadith, that the Qur'an was revealed after 24 days past. But there are the delil that show the Qur'an could have been revealed on the 21st, 23rd, 27th, and the 29th. It seems like the 27th is the strongest. And the Imam al-Shafi'i said, it could be that Laylatul Qadr, every year it changes. So the Nabi told the people, Look for later to Qadr in the last odd nights of the last 10 days. The point here is, the Qur'an, the Torah, the Injil, the Suhb of Ibrahim, the Zubur, all revealed in this month, the month of fasting. Fasting and the Qur'an, revelation go together. The Nabi told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as-siyamu wal-Qur'anu yashfi'ani mil-abdi yawmu qiyamati. يقول الصيام ربي إني منعت الطعام والشهوة بالنهار فشفعني فيه ويقول القرآن ربي إني منعت النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه The Quran and Siyam, both of them will come يوم القيامة and they will intercede on behalf of the slave. 
The Siam will say, oh my Lord, I stopped him from eating during the day. And I just stopped him from his shahwa with his wife during the day. So let me intercede on his behalf. Because he obeyed that. He could go home right now and do something crazy. He can eat, he can drink, he can do something crazy. But he didn't because of song. So the song will come and intercede on his behalf. The Quran will come and say, Oh my Lord, I prevented him from going to sleep during the night. So cause me to be an intercessor for him. And that's from the virtues of at taraweeh We get home from Green Lane, 1 o'clock, 1.30. If it wasn't for Ramadan, most of us would be in bed already. Some of us, we combine between Al-Maghrib and Isha during these days because of the lateness of Salat Al-Isha. We go to bed early, but it's because of Ramadan and fasting that we stay up. So, the Qur'an and Siyam are together in that hadith. The Nabi told the people Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Anyone who fasts in Ramadan with Iman and expecting a reward, he'll be forgiven for his sins. Another hadith, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Anyone who stands up and he prays because it's Ramadan, he has Iman, he thinks he's going to get a reward, he'll be forgiven for his sins. All of those hadith and the ayat, they go to show there is an irtibat, wafiq, big connection between fasting and the Qur'an. If you're fasting and you didn't read the Qur'an more, something's wrong with your fast in Ramadan. If you're fasting Ramadan and you didn't hear the Qur'an more, something is wrong with your fast, Ya Abdullah, with this week that has passed. We have to fast more because it's Ramadan. And we have to read the Qur'an and hear the Qur'an and pay attention to the Qur'an. That's the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there is another ibadah that's connected to Ramadan. Many people have forgotten. Many. This ummah has forgotten this ibadah. Many people from this ummah. And that is the ibadah of al-jihad. Fi sabirillah. Al-jihad. It's a karima, a word Muslims are even afraid of. When they hear it, some people get up and leave the masjid. I don't want to be caught there when that word is mentioned. Al-jihad. What's the connection between al-jihad? And I'm not talking about jihad, not eating food. You make jihad enough in terms of making yourself read the Quran. I'm not talking about that jihad. I'm talking about al-jihad where we're having al-qital fi sabirillah. Al-jihad, al-jihad. It's connected to Ramadan. It's an ibadah connected to Ramadan. Allah Ta'ala decreed that the greatest battle known to mankind transpired, transpired happened in the month of Ramadan, and that's the, the battle of Badr. Why do we wait till the 17th to celebrate Badr, and then that's when we talk about Badr? The Nabi said about this jihad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man mata wa lam yagzu, wa lam yuhaddith nafsuhu bil ghazwi, mata ala, mata ala shu'batin min nifaq. Anyone who dies, and he never made jihad, nor did he encourage himself to make jihad. Oh, if there's an opportunity to make jihad and the door's open, I'm going. He never even said that. He lived, he died, didn't make jihad, nor did he encourage himself, and he died like that. He would die on a branch of hypocrisy because a Muslim man is an individual who realizes he has to be ready to defend his honor, has to be ready to defend his wife and children has to be ready to defend his money that he worked hard for and his property. Has to be ready to defend the most important of all of those issues, and that is his religion. He lives in the life and he doesn't think, how, when, and where will I be able to defend my religion? And jihad is connected to the month of Ramadan. In the ayat that we have read already, Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, لَقَدْ وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّتُمْ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ إِذْ تَقُولُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَلَنْ يَكْفِيَكُمْ أَنْ يُمِدُّكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِثَلَاثِةِ آلَافٍ مِّنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُنْزَلِينَ Verily Allah has helped you Muslims. رضي الله عنهم Allah has helped you at the battle of Badr when you people were weak, lowly, and oppressed, and you were few in numbers. The non-Muslims were more than you. But Allah helped you at Badr from the reasons why they were helped. Because of the barakah of Ramadan. Because of the tawheed that they had. 
because of their tamassuk with the sunnah that the Nabi, he was the example. He was the one who told the people sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, جُعِلَ الرِّسْقِ تَحْتَ ظِلْ رُمْحِي My sustenance, the food that I make, my salary, the money that I eat, I dress, it comes as a result. My risk, it comes as a result of the shade of my spear. Not that he killed people and forced them to come into Islam. Not that he killed people innocently. Not that he blew up people innocently. But he went out to spread this religion and there were people who opposed him. And he brought them under. They, he brought them under. And then when he brought them under his power, he took their property. That was his risk. The tenth that was given to him by Allah from the jihad. So the companions, they saw that. They practiced that. They were upon his sunnah. And as a result of that, Allah helped them at Badr. How did Allah help them? Allah helped them in this ayah by sending down a number of malaika. In this ayah, they mentioned 3,000 that came down and they helped those few companions. After the war of Badr, Jibril came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Muhammad, what's your opinion and what do you think about those Muslims who participated and fought with you in the war of Badr? Abu Bakr and Umar and Ali and Zayd ibn Harith and Bilal and the rest of them. What's your opinion about those companions who were with you? The Nabi says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're the best of this ummah. They're the best of this ummah. Jibril said, and also the malaika who participated with you in the war of Badr, they are the best of the malaika. So the Quran and the Sunnah shows that the malaika, they participated in the jihads with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this religion, al-Islam, that we are upon, we inherited it. This religion, it didn't get established on the shoulders of angels. The angels are not the ones who put this religion on their shoulders and they carried it to mankind. They helped in the war of Badr, but the religion was established by men, by human beings, by those companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Allah Ta'ala mentioned ayat about those companions, may Allah be pleased with all of them. Min al-mu'mineen rijal, sadaqu ma ahadullah alayhi. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى لَحْبُهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَغِرْ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا From the believers are men, رضي الله عنهم, men. One of them in the month of Ramadan, Uthman ibn Affan would read the Qur'an in the witr, one rakat. Tamim al-Dari رضي الله عنه read all of the Qur'an in one rakat. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu read that Qur'an three times in the month of Ramadan. One Jews of the Qur'an, we're saying one Jews of the Qur'an, and the shaitan is coming to us and saying to us every day, is too much. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah is ghafur rahim I'm not going to go today. It's too much. Why when the imam does the witr and the qunut, why does he say, Sabbi hisma rabbika al-a'la? Why doesn't he just say the short surahs? Why does he make the long du'a and the qunut and so forth and so on? Allah described those people, رضي الله عنهم. He said, from them are men who, they were true to the contracts that they made with Allah عز وجل. From them are those who went out and they gave their lives, fi sabilillah. And there were others who were still waiting and they didn't change anything. The companions after the death of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, unlike the Shiite of Iran and Iraq and other than them, unlike they claim, the companions did not change anything. Not the Khilafah, not the Quran, nothing. As a matter, as a matter of fact, they preserved the religion. Allah described those companions, radiallahu anhum, and how they carried the jihad on their shoulders. Men, human beings. Not malaika, and Allah could have made the malaika carry the deen. They helped, but it was on the shoulders of those companions. Allah mentioned in the Quran in Surah At Tawbah, In Allah ashtara min al mu'minina anfusahum bi anna lahum al janna. Yukatiluna fi sabili lahi. Yakataluna wa yukataloon. Wa'adin alayhi haqqin fi tawrati wal injiri wal Quran. Wa men awfa bi ahdi min Allah. فَاسْتَبَشِرُوا بِبَيْعِكُمْ الَّذِي بَعْيَعْتُمْ بِهِ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah has purchased from the believers, He purchased from them their lives and their monies. And in the return, they'll get the Jannah. They fight in the cause of Allah. They kill, 
the enemies of Al Islam, they kill the people who tried to stop La ilaha illallah from going forth. They kill them and they're also killed by them. This is the promise of Allah Azawajal that He mentioned in the Torah, in the Injil, in the Quran, and who is better in the promise that He gave than Allah. So be happy, have the bushra, be happy concerning this information that Allah Ta'ala has given you because that's truly the true felicity. So what's the point here, Ikhwani, what's the point here? The point here is, we have a religious responsibility in the month of Ramadan, outside of the month of Ramadan, to see the bigger picture, to stop complaining. We have it good here in the UK. We have it good. We're going to go back to our homes. There are those of us, we won't take the time out to try to read Surah Al-Kaf, and it's in your best interest. There are those of us who won't make dua. There are those of us who won't go to Salat Al-Maghrib or Isha in the masjid. There are those of us who won't make Salat Al-Taraweeh. There are those of us who we're not going to make the sajda of a shukr from the ibadat in this month that we should make a lot. We have a religious responsibility when you get tired, when you're thirsty, when you're hungry, when you feel it's hot and the day is long, we have a responsibility to say, we have to be like those people who carry this religion. So I want to share with you two ayats, inshallah, and we'll finish with this. And the reason why I want to share these two ayats is because of the virtues of coming to the masjid and learning the book of Allah. Two ayats. The Nabi told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ajtama'a qawmun fi bayti min buyutillahi yatluna kitab Allahi wa yatadarasunuhu fi ma baynuhum illa nazalat alayhum as-sakina wa ghashatuhum al-rahma wa haffat bihim al-malaikatu wa dhakarahum Allahu fi man indahu. No people ever come together in one of the masajid, in the house of Allah. They read the Qur'an between themselves. They study the Qur'an between themselves. Whenever they do that, the sakina comes down. The Rahmah of Allah comes down upon them for sitting, for learning. The Malaika come down and they surround them to participate. And Allah mentions those people who are learning His Qur'an with those in the sky, the Malaika. The Nabi told the people sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, تَعَلِّمُ الْقُرْآنِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي شَفِيعٌ لَكُمْ Learn the Qur'an, it will come as an intercessor for you if you learn it. The Nabi told the people sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لِأَنْ يَغْدُوَ أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ فَيَقْرَأَ أَوْ يَتَعَلَّمَ آيَتَيْنِ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ خَيْرُ لَهُ مِنْ نَاقَتَيْنِ وَثَلَاثَ خَيْرُ لَهُ مِنْ ثَلَاثِ وَأَرْبَ خَيْرُ لَهُ مِنْ أَرْبَعَ وَمِنْ أَعْدَادِ ذَلِكَ مِنْ الْإِبِلِ If one of you goes to the masjid and you read two ayat, or you learn two ayat, or you read, or you read three ayat, you learn three ayat, you read four ayat, or you learn four ayat, that's better for him than going to get two camels, or three camels, or four camels. You sit in the masjid and you read Surah Al-Kath, over 100 ayat, 110 ayat, that's better for you than going to get 110 camels. But we don't look at the Qur'an like that. We don't look at the Qur'an like that. al muhim the ayat that we want to deal with, Ikhwani, is an ayat that's in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 251. Allah He mentioned in this ayat that was revealed in this month, Tabaraka wa ta'ala, وَلَوْلَا دَفْءُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْدُهُمْ بِبَعْدٍ لَفَسَدَةِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ If it wasn't for the fact that Allah checked one group of people by using another group of people with jihad, if Allah didn't check one group of people by using another group of people, then there would be fasad in the earth. The earth would be fitting and fasad and problems. But Allah is ذو فَضْل عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Because He legislated jihad, this is a fadl and a rahmah on the people. Because if it wasn't a group of people to stand up, to stop other people from doing things, there's going to be fitna and fasad. That's in Surah Al-Baqarah. The other ayat is in Surah Al-Hajj. Ayat number 40, 40. It's similar to the first ayat. And Allah by mentioning this ayat and it's similar to the first, Allah didn't mention it to waste time. He's above that. He mentioned it to let the people know. When things are repeated in the Qur'an or the Sunnah, it's to let you know this thing is important. فَإِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ عُسْرَى إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ عُسْرَى That is repeated twice, so you won't have any doubt. Those ayat that are repeated, أَدِّينُ نَصِيحَ أَدِّينُ نَصِيحَ أَدِّينُ نَصِيحَ Pay attention, it's important. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ 
Allah didn't mention those things just to waste time. Hasha lillah. The second ayah from Surah Al-Hajj, Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentioned, وَلَوْلَا دَفْءُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْدُهُمْ بِبَعْدًا لَهُدِّمَتْ سَوَامِعْ وَبَيْعٌ وَصَلَوَاتٌ وَمَسَاجِدٌ يُذْكُرُ فِيهَا اسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا If it wasn't for a group of people, that Allah repelled one group of people with another group of people, if that didn't happen, then many of the monasteries, many of the synagogues, many of the churches, many of the messages in which the name of Allah is being mentioned in them, they will be torn down, they will be destroyed. They will be torn down and they will be destroyed. So what's the point here? What's the point here? In Burma right now, in Burma, if there were a group of Muslims protecting the Burmese people, the Muslims there, then the other people, those Buddhists, wouldn't be killing them. The Ibnillah. In Palestine, why are the Jews, the Zionists, killing the Palestinians like that? Because no one is getting in the way to say or to do anything. In Syria, they're being killed because no one's going to get involved. In Kashmir, no one's getting involved. America gets involved where it has some benefit. It has some, has some petrol dollars there, has some money, something that they're going to do, they'll get involved. It's not about democracy, it's just about their own personal benefit. But the point is, the principle is, if it wasn't a, for a group of one people, then there's going to be fitting and fasad, and that's the rahmah of Allah Ta'ala, that he would legislate al-jihad, to stop people from oppressing other people. So now, every night in Ramadan, across the globe, in our masjid Green Lane, the Imam says a dua every night, Allahumma, لا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يرحمنا. Every night, oh Allah, don't cause a group of people who don't have any rahma on us because of our sins. Don't put over us people who won't have rahma upon us. And we say, Amin, Amin, Amin. Every night, every night, the Zionist Jews they have no rahma on the Palestinians. No rahma. Those Buddhists in Burma have no rahma. The Hindus have no rahma on the Muslims in Kashmir. No rahma. We're saying, Ami, Ami, year in and year out, year in and year out. And one of the reasons for that, Ikhwani, is because after Salatul Tarawih, we go home and we do everything that's against the religion. During the course of the day, we do a lot of things that are against the religion. So the dua is not accept accepted. Today is Friday. The Olympics are going to start today. The Olympics, today is the opening ceremony. Today, the opening ceremony. They spend 30 million pounds for the opening ceremony. 30 million pounds. Burmese Muslims, they can use that money. Somalis who are in camps in Kenya, they can use that money. Kashmir people can use that money. Palestinians can use that. Just for the opening ceremony. This is not preparation and coming, the preparations before, during all of these days. If a Muslim is watching the Olympics, he's watching the Olympics, Hussein Bolt, Hussein Bolt running without any clothes on, tight spandex, he's watching people swim, the women play volleyball, whatever the case is. The Olympics is shirkum billah. Greek people came up with these Olympics. It's built upon Hercules, myths, kofa, shirk. The Muslim of Tawheed, the person of Ahlul Hadith, the person of Ahlul Sunnah, person of a Salafiyya, the Muslim, he doesn't allow himself to stoop so low to watch and waste time in the month of Ramadan on that nonsense. The women going to want run the 100 meter race and it's a lot of excitement, a lot of excitement. People are going to sit there and watch those ladies run with no clothes on and then in the end of the night, Allahumma la tusallitu alayna bi dhanubina. La, that's not the fast of Al Islam. The fast of Al Islam, Ikhwani, is a salat. The fast of Al Islam is a siyam. The fast of Al Islam is a jihad fi sabirillah. Now, I'm not telling anyone here, go get a gun and go to Burma. I'm not definitely telling anybody here to go get on an airplane and blow up the Burmese airlines. I'm not saying that to anyone. But what I am saying to you is to utilize your dua, your real dua. After we get home, we have an hour and a half, inshallah, before Fajr. That hour and a half is the last third of the night. 
We're already up. We're just standing up, especially on the weekend. We're going to stay up anyway. Take that time and utilize that time, even if you don't pray, to make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. During that hour, like the Imam, he makes that dua. Oh Allah, A'izz al-Islam wal muslimin Give power to Islam and the Muslims and destroy the enemies of the religion. Make that dua with sincerity at the last third of the night. Pay them back with what they gave us. Pay them back with what they gave us. The slaps and the murder and all that stuff that they gave us. So the last point that we want to make to you brothers concerning this particular issue is every year we're going to hear the same ayat, we're going to hear the same hadith. Nothing changes. The thing that has to change though is people managing their time a little bit better, people raising their game, their ibadah a little bit better, a little bit more. The fact that this is a golden opportunity, you have to evaluate yourself. This last week that went by, Friday the Thursday was the first week. Made some mistakes here and there, missed some salats in the masjid here and there. There's some good things here and there, but this new week is going to be better. We're still in the first third of Ramadan. The first 10 days didn't come, it didn't finish yet. This is the eighth day. This Friday is the eighth day. Now we're about to go into the ninth day tonight after Salat al Maghrib, inshallah ta'ala. So let us take advantage of this opportunity in making dua for the mujahideen, in being a group of people who talk to themselves, the nafs. It says, I hope I get an opportunity to go somewhere in the land to defend the religion and not just be so concerned with how many samosas I'm going to eat and how much water I'm going to drink and how long the days are and how just complain, complain, complain. As for those companions, radiallahu anhum, that's why they were the examples of the deen. They were the examples because they didn't hesitate to make any sacrifice and they didn't complain to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. So this month, Ramadan, is the month of jihad, the jihad of Qital. I end this with a question that Allah put towards you. A number of questions, but I only mention one. He said in the Quran, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu, ma lakum nada qila lakum infiru fi sabilillahi thaqaltum ila al-ard, araditum bil hayat al-dunya ala al-akhira, وَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيمٌ إِلَّا تَنْفِرُوا يُعَذِّبُكُمْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمًا وَيَسْتَبْدِ الْقَوْمٍ غَيْرَكُمْ وَلَا تَضُرُّهُ شَيْئًا وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Oh you who believe, oh you who believe. Why is it when you are called and you are encouraged and you are invited to go out فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Not 40 days جَمَاتَ التَّبْلِيقِ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ to go out and fight to prove the deen and your iman. Why when that invitation is made, you hold on to the earth and you don't go out, you refuse. Have you chosen the hayat of the dunya over the hereafter? The hayat of the dunya in comparison to the hereafter is only a little bit. If you don't go out and you don't participate in the jihad, then Allah Azza wa Jal, He's going to give you a tremendous punishment and He's going to change you with another group of people. People are better than you. And you won't be able to, def you won't be able to harm Allah one bit and Allah is capable of doing all things. That's just one ayah from a number of ayahs that ask that question. Ya ayyul ladina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adabin alim تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذَنُوبَكُمْ وَيُدْكَلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدَنْ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Questions after questions in jihad. Why are we not going out? Oh, you believe. Shall I not invite you to a tijara that will please you? And the ayat went on and it went on. So Allah didn't put it on us that we got to go out and make jihad because that ain't our issue right now. But we have the ability to make dua. We have the ability to stay in the masjid to read Surah Al-Kahf. We have the ability not to go home and to turn on the TV. We have the ability to say to our family members, Hey, those Olympics, haram. Haram! People say, Abu, you're mutshaddi. Do you believe it's okay? A man from Pakistan is going to the Olympics this year and he's going to swim. He's going to swim the 100 meters. 
And if he wins, what are we going to say? Allahu Akbar. The Somali man from London, Mo Farah. He's one of the best runners in the world. He's going to run. If he wins, he makes sajda. What are we going to say? Allahu Akbar. No. Watching that, haram. The Muslim lady, for years, Saudi Arabia, they didn't allow women to participate in the Olympics at all. It was in their kanun. Never allowed it. This year, the first woman is going to participate. Why? Because the whole world put pressure on Saudi Arabia and said, where's the democracy? Where's the women's liberation? Where's the equality? So they buckled under the pressure. So this year, the lady is going to participate. That's the condition of Al-Islam. I don't single out and mention Saudi Arabia to bring them down. That's just an example. If you're not politically correct today, you're going to have problems. Our religion is changing. These little kids, when they grow up, inshallah, we don't know what's the complexion of their Islam. What is it going to look like? What is it going to look like, their Islam? Because you can't even mention words now in Al-Islam. You can't even mention, how does Al-Islam distinguish and make differences between the man and the woman? And so many other issues. And so many other issues. So although we're not going to make that type of jihad, we have to make dua for those Syrian brothers who are making jihad and defending their land, their property, their honor from the kafir hakim who's there. We have to make dua to Allah Ta'ala for our brothers who are in the other parts of the Muslim world, like in Libya. How have the Muslims forgotten Libya? Right now there's fitting and folding facade in Libya, in Al-Iraq, all over the place. So let us make dua and remember, Ramadan is the month of jihad, it's not the month of sleep, it's not the month of complaining. This is the month of the Fathun Qareeb from Allah Ta'ala provided that people are treading the path of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alaihi Wasallam and his companions Radiallahu Anhum Ajma'een Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh